Unfortunately, this story did not end up how I had wanted it to, as you'll see at the end of our video. However, the seed for this idea was planted about a year ago from Amar. Also, I think Thomas in an environment like this would be so uncomfortable. So please let us know in the comments if you want to see Thomas abandoned in a rural African village. The idea was for me to be abandoned in an African tribe for at least a day. Looks like someone's going to uh, maroon without me. You're abandoning me. That's not all that's happening. These Baka people that I'm going to spend time with live in Cameroon and they're like almost like uncontacted. Like they're very, very, very remote. To live with them, learn from them, and immerse myself in an environment that I had never gotten close to experiencing before. Yeah, on this road trip, it's gonna be pretty dangerous. There have been um, kidnappings in Northern Cameroon, but I don't think I've been this nervous than I've been in a while. And so, right after our first episode of our African saga, which I highly recommend you go watch after this if you haven't seen it already, I traveled to the country of Cameroon for our second adventure in Africa, one which, let's just say, was filled with surprises. To get to the tribe we were searching for, we had to drive about 15 hours. Rainy days, we begin the road trip. Deep into the eastern outskirts of Cameroon, near the border of the Central African Republic, a country currently in civil war and thus a place few visitors ever make it to. Officially arrived on dirt roads. How many kilometers on dirt roads? 189. We're going far. Yeah. So we keep getting stopped by people trying to find a flaw in the car to charge us for. For something that they can catch you on and say, okay, for example, 10,000, 5,000, for no reason. That is how they used to do here. A lot of bit of traffic. <laughs> Local traffic. As we were driving further and further away from the capital, I'll admit that I was getting nervous. Our only spare tire for the way there and back was now used, and as the remoteness of where we were heading was sinking in, it dawned on me how far out we were in the eventuality that anything went wrong. Okay, this is the town that we are staying in. The Baka tribe is three kilometers into the jungle from here. So that evening we arrived at the only hotel in the village near the forest where the tribe lives. Home sweet home for the night. Okay, great. You okay? It's, yeah, it's perfect. As we make our way to the tribe, I'd first like to share with you an opportunity to join me on an adventure next year. And I promise, probably not as crazy as this one. With the most reoccurring comment, DM, and email we receive being from you guys wanting to join us on adventures, we've decided to open the door for that to happen. As our primary fuel for these adventures and the Rockstar team behind Yes Theory being Seek Discomfort, we'll be bringing three people who participate on our holiday drop this season with us on a trip with me next year. We currently have the largest collection of products we've ever released. Expansion packs of our card game, a vast edition of brand new designs this week, restocked and improved Sherpa hoodies, and our Seeker Essential collection extended to also include Love Over Fear and Yes. We've made shipping free for international orders above $150 and free in the US for orders above $99. And on top of that, Tommy will literally come to your house and do your dishes for a year. So go to seedisconfort.com to get your seat gear and an entry ticket to join us on an adventure next year. All right, today's the day going into the jungle to meet the Baka people. I'd like to introduce you to the Baka people. The Baka are considered the principal hunter-gatherers of the tropical rainforest of central West Africa. Averaging one and a half meters, or five feet in height, they were formerly referred to as pygmies, a term now considered derogatory. 
They live semi-nomadic lifestyles, mostly surviving by foraging and setting traps in the jungle, an art form they have perfected over centuries and centuries of expert survival. They reside primarily in southeastern Cameroon, northern Gabon, and in the northern part of the Republic of Congo. However, sadly, much like many indigenous communities around the world, the Baka people have been driven out of their native lands deep in the forest in the interests of harvesting the natural resources of the area. For these reasons, we have chosen to spend some time with this marginalized community, to learn from them and experience what their lives are like today, halfway living at the edge between towns with schools and hospitals and deep in the jungle like their ancestors. The plan is for me to be dropped off completely on my own with this small village of nine families, hoping to learn as much as I can in the time given to me. I'll be honest that I did not really know what to expect from this experience. All I can tell you is that I went into this trip with an open mind and an open heart. Our welcoming committee. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> I've ever received. I can't describe what I'm feeling right now. I'm walking into the woods now where they live, and then I'll be with them for the next 24 to 36 hours. I can't say that when we started this channel, I'd ever think I'd end up this remote. But I guess here we are. Bongo <laughs> Pierre. <laughs> I'm assuming they don't really receive a whole lot of visitors. Probably they don't come from Sweden. <laughs> so this is the chief. The chief is showing you uh, where they are living. They are. Before gaining their independence in 1960, Cameroon was colonized by the French Republic. Meaning that to this day, French is still one of the most common spoken languages, which did make it a lot easier for me to communicate with the locals and a few of the Baka. I've been to a lot of remote places, but I don't think I've ever felt this far away from home in my whole life. The, the husband and wife sleep back there. Three kids sleep right here. Are you nervous? Yeah, but also I chose to be here. I'm, I'm humbled to be here. So I'm also very grateful that they've made a space for me. Ils ont construit cette maison pratiquement en 24 heures. Lorsqu'on a annoncé que vous serez là, ils ont dit non. Ils vont vous construire votre maison. Et même wow. dans le combat, le gars. Donc, euh, un lit traditionnel. Wow. <laughs> merci, merci, merci. Wow, the warmest welcome I've, I've received. Je me sens déjà comme chez moi. D'accord. Ça nous rassure. Ouais. <laughs> As a gift and a thank you, we brought a lot of food. We brought rice, we brought soap, we brought salt, sugar. We will be distributing also some some funds to each of the families as just as a thank you for letting us be here. It's not something that they're expecting or asking for. It... Voici les provisions qui vous ont été apportées par euh, votre frère qui est venu de très loin pour vous voir, pour vous dire que il connaît que vous êtes là pour créer une relation et une amitié avec vous. I'm about to be alone here. See Good you. luck, monsieur. See you. See you. Okay, my guy just left. I'm unsure if they've seen a, a white person before. They're looking at me rather confused. <laughs> this is my home for the next two days. I can't say that I've slept on a piece of wood before. How did I end up here? I've been far away from home. I'm not gonna say I haven't done that before, but never alone in these circumstances. I don't know what I will eat. I don't know how I will drink. I did bring a little bit of water because they drink from a stream down here. And although I have a water filter, the risk of getting sick for me is probably quite high. So I've chosen to be a little bit safe on the waterfront. But the food, I have no clue. I didn't bring anything with me and don't know what to expect. Hello, hello, it's the cafe indigenous. 
café non. indigène. Oui. Wow. Ça soigne tout. Ça soigne tout Oui, c'est ah. Et c'est fait de quoi Vous trouvez ça dans la, dans la forêt Oui, on trouve ça dans le champ. Il dit que ça aide même avec la malaria. Il dit qu'ils ont la malaria souvent ici. Ça ne doit pas être facile à gérer dans ces circonstances. Ils ont appris le français par maintenant être moved further from the forest, closer to the villages. 20 years ago, the Baka were taken out of the depth of the forest to be moved closer to the villages. The current generation is thus now living at the edge of it, maintaining their traditions and way of life the best they can, yet feeling pressure to let go of their past, finding themselves somewhere in between their ancestors' lives and the rest of the local society. At the moment, the village is doing various things. Some are snacking on some of the gifts, some are cleaning up, some are hanging out. The little moments of watching each house I think I'm going to keep saying it. Never felt this remote before. After a few hours spent with the tribe tending to various tasks, the younger generation wanted to head into the forest. Well, dans la forêt? Yeah. I have no idea where we're going. We're just we're just going. Oh my god. I have never seen this many ants before. Holy shit. Wow, there are giant ants. And what I would quickly find out is that these ants bite. Ow. Motherfuckers. Now I know why they were worried about those ants. Whoa, look at that. That is one massive caterpillar. Ça fait mal. Oh, they sting. C'est dangereux? The road is getting more and more challenging. Paving the path at this point. Ah, we're setting traps, so we are hunting right now. The Baka hunt and gather much of their own food. The men hunt and trap in the surrounding forest using often poison arrows and spears to great effect. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> wow. In this instance, they're hoping to catch small antelopes that inhabit the region and forest rodents. So he's chewing on some bark that I think he's going to spit all over the trap. What they chewed and spat on the traps will attract animals that they're hoping to catch. The coco. Ah, okay. Wow. What they are now searching for are coca leaves. Common in several communities around the world, raw coca leaves chewed and consumed as tea are rich in nutritional properties and minerals, such as calcium, potassium, vitamin C, and nutrients such as protein and fiber. And they go to great lengths to find them. For the love of God, please don't fall. <laughs> there's one, two, and then there's one up there somehow. He's making this look very easy. You gotta have some serious cojones to climb that tree to bring back some coca leaves. There are ants all over my shoes. So many ants. Oh. Okay. I'm a total amateur here. The thunder is really coming in. It's starting to rain. Peut-être aller se couvrir, vous restez. Okay. Wow. Looks like they're fortifying their hut here for the rain to come. Ah, c'est gentil. C'est des plantains. Ah, merci. Merci, c'est gentil. Wow, they brought some plantains. Look at that. The plantains actually sounds great right now. I haven't eaten anything all day. Oh, I'm gonna take a break from eating these plantains. Ah. Ça c'est quoi exactement? Le génium. Ah. Ah ok. C'est bon. Mm. <laughs> There are a lot of kids here. piece of flip-flop that I think they've cut in a circle so it rolls.
<laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna try and learn this freaking game. It's like a board, piece of cardboard. <laughs> Kids will find a way to play any way possible. Merci. Merci beaucoup, c'est très gentil. Ah, merci. It's like a potato, actually. Not bad. Merci, c'est très bon. Wow, so kind. Merci. Yeah. <laughs> they were down there earlier preparing it. I didn't realize it was for me. They were cleaning it, prepared it. It's very sweet. But the root is better than the plantain, I will say that. After eating a bit of the food they had offered me, I heard drums outside of my hut. The evening drums and dancing begins. It's five o'clock. And in the evenings, as the sun sets, they like to dance and sing. As the sun sets, the Baca people's long-lasting tradition and importance of dancing and singing flourishes in its full glory. This is beautiful. I feel extremely immersed and deep right now, but words can't describe how surreal all of this is right now. They've got such collective harmony and improv. It's, uh, non-Baka people from the neighboring village rolling in. The vibes are very high right now. We've been here for over an hour now and it's been, um, it's been amazing to witness. <laughs> <laughs> Sun is basically setting, almost fully set. I can't really tell. One heck of a day. <laughs> it is currently night. Don't really know what people are doing. There's somebody standing outside my tent, staring at me. Um, I feel a little bit more nervous with it being sundown and random people not from this village coming in and out, having heard that there's some strange man sleeping in a hut. But um, I uh, have a lot of emotions to process, but overall, I'm just grateful that we're here now. Don't know who's outside my tent, but there's a group of them standing there. Mes amis? Mais tu vas arriver là-bas, quelle est? Où ça? Là-bas, chez vous. Ah, donc je rentre chez moi dans 10 jours. Ouais. <rire> je vais aller dans l'avion. <rire> C'est mon premier fois pour ouais. regarder l'avion comme ça. Ah oui Waouh wow. ouais. <rire> Là, il y a les gens, beaucoup de gens. Il y a beaucoup de gens Oui. Ouais. 200 personnes 200. Oui. C'est beaucoup, hein Il y a 200 personnes, ça ne pèse pas. Si c'est lourd, mais l'avion il peut le, il peut le porter. <laughs> I had a hour and a half long conversation with that man. Very eye opening. Mais moi ça que tous les pays n'ont pas le soleil. Il y a du soleil, mais c'est pas, c'est pas aussi chaud qu'ici en France. Il fait un peu plus, plus froid. Ok. Toi tu vas te coucher? Mais j'ai fermé la porte. Ah merci. Ciao. On se voit demain. Merci pour la conversation. Okay. <laughs> wow, he's closing the door. Okay. okay. À demain. Mosquito net unlocked. This is my drone bag as my pillow. This will be my home. Okay. I'm all cuddled up into bed. I'm realizing that this bed was constructed with a baka person in mind, not a 
lanky Swedish dude, so my feet completely hang off the edge. <laughs> Very sweet of them to give me this space though. For now, over and out. Good morning. It's about 6.30 a.m. Slept better than I thought I would. Love you. Bonjour. Ça va? <laughs> okay. As I was just laying here, they just walked in. Hello, we just wanted to say good morning and hope that you're okay. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Thank you. Bonjour. Hey, how are you? I'm not too sure what's going on. They're just. You're standing here. I'm standing there. <laughs> They're as confused as I am. Just <laughs> looking at each other. <laughs> Lost in translation. <laughs> Today I would be leaving the tribe. And after spending a slow morning playing with some of the kids, I spent more time trying to understand the Baka tribe's day-to-day -day struggle for survival. Now we're gonna go collect some water. I'm not fully sure how. Whoa! Okay. You know, it's so easy to take water for granted. We just have it on, on tap here. Just the task of retrieving water is a, is a trek and a journey. What a survival challenge. Et pourquoi c'est difficile? Qu'est-ce que vous voudriez en, en premier? Ce serait quoi la première, première chose? On veut d'abord Parce que les enfants vont, vont boire de l'eau mm. et l'école aussi, mm, l'hôpital. On est à ce point. Merci, Merci d'avoir euh, m'expliqué ça. Oui. Ouais. Ça c'est mes amis. <laughs> How are you? Hi, bonjour. Bonjour. Unfortunately, the end of our story took the biggest bad turn I'd ever been faced with while filming, and we had to leave swiftly. I don't know if this will make the story, but Cameroon Secret Service is alert, wondering what a foreigner is doing in the area. I'm worried that I'm a spy, but now we're kind of hiding a little bit, trying to skip out before they come and ask more questions. This is turning into a whole thing. I can't leave the car. The brave and humble Baka people who welcomed me as they did, however, truly touched me. Hearing firsthand from a community disconnected from its roots and struggling with finding a path into the future left me feeling without answers. I wish I could say that their future is secured and they will eventually get looked after, but that seems uncertain at this point. As the world grows more and more into a globalized and modernized society, smaller communities like these are left struggling. And I hope that as a worldwide community, we can make communities like this a greater priority in our actions and conversations. As we left, some local authority for some reason assumed I was a foreign spy and sent soldiers to come and arrest me. He sent a group of 11 people to the Baka. You can make a call to the embassy huh? for you. Yeah. yeah. There is a lot of abuse that we are facing here as a journalist in Cameroon. They had sent people to the hotel we stayed in in search for information, and my local fixers came to get me to leave the area as quickly as we could. This eventually turned into the most stressful race to leave a country in a rush I'd ever been through. We drove 15 hours straight to the airport and I took the first flight leaving. Although we'd done everything we usually do on trips like this, something went wrong and my Africa adventure was temporarily interrupted as I flew home to Paris to process what had just happened. 